I'll read you paragraph one paragraph after each game. And what I, what I mean by that is I'm just going to read you one because I'm going to lose the game and get too grumpy to read this shit. Hello again, Destiny. And boy, do I have quite the super long schizo email for you today. <laughs> I'm sorry. I hope you read this one because I circle jerk you a lot in this one, but I also throw some shade at Tabor and Molina. So hopefully that doesn't rub you in the wrong direction too much. No matter how many Spurgs attack you over the recent discourse, stay strong, King. You are the only one who is not a woman-hating incel, but still says the things that need to be said to properly critique society. It's extremely important to have someone like that. Otherwise, the only places people will flock to are the red pill anti-women communities or the complete, utter, drooling, delusional lefty communities that have their heads in the sand over this issue. <laughs> he links my tweet about the OnlyFans girls or whatever. <sighs> Tune in next time. God, this song triggers chat so much. I love it. Oh, no, no, wait. Stack, 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 stack. Five stack, four thresh. Oh, God. How, how, is that the wolf squad? What is it? Drooling delusional lefty communities that have their heads in the sand over this issue. This Twitter interaction is what I'm talking about. The Shark Zero retard is using one of the stupidest copy-pasted dialogue tree talking points about all the biggest top 1% YouTubers slash streamers are men. Every time I see lefties pivot to this point, as if it has anything to do with what's actually being discussed. Every time I see, oh, as if it has anything. To me, one of the biggest red flags of low intelligence is when Destiny brings up issue X and dumb people respond by talking about A, B, and C instead because they're incapable of seeing that X isn't the same or even related to A, B, and C. It's very rich when I see lefties of all people start citing the 0.0001% over the experience of 99.99999% working class. Don't let them get away with this talking point. What I mean is, who the fuck cares if men are the ones having an easier time at the 0.0001% of YouTubers, streamers, CEO, presidents, you name it, when there is now an increasing evidence that the remaining 99% of life seems to favor attractive white women. Don't women, mainly white, out-earn men on average now in the younger upcoming millennial generation? Just because the top 0.1% of Twitch of, is men it doesn't change the fact that you can just enter any category on Twitch and just be an attractive woman, turn on the camera, just sit in front of it doing absolutely nothing and talking about absolutely nothing and get an easy 50 to 100 views. The biggest variable here is literally just one, being at the absolutely nothing and get an easy 50 to 100 views. The biggest variable here is literally just one, being at the right time and place with the right connections, or two, how attractive or sexual you're behaving on camera. Most of the 50 viewers will also disproportionately give you more money compared to 50 viewers a male streamer might get. Why would Shark Zero only analyze the top 1% and not the bottom 99%? Did he control for the populations of men and women on Twitch? I don't have data on this, but I wouldn't be surprised if you looked at the bottom 75% earners on Twitch and you controlled for population of men versus women. It wouldn't surprise me if women were out earning men here too. And let's say, even if we ignore Twitch, OnlyFans, Instagram, YouTube, Snapchat, Patreon, Twitter, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, where white women are favored in the 98% bracket, even if men have it easier reaching the top 1% to 2%, and let's say we shift gears to the offline real world. Hold on. God, this guy is hitting all my incel points. I love it. You can still see many of the same trends. In 2019, I used to be probably way more feminist than I'd like to admit. I probably would have gotten mad if anyone said you can be a woman and get an easy 50 to 100 viewers, but one major experience that opened my mind and begun and probably begun the de-radicalization process was my final year in electrical engineering at university. I was taking the final class required to become an engineer, the most difficult class. It's extremely short, it only lasts 30 days, but you're given an extremely difficult design problem statement and the professor nor any of the university faculty are allowed to help you. You aren't allowed to talk to any other students and the problem is so complex that there's really no way you can Google or get help from third party sources. Faculty can usually detect if people work together secretly, so students are careful there as well. The class was about 80% men, 20% women. It was probably the most difficult year of my life. I even started taking medicine and, um, and this particular university was even required to give a stress relief session every Thursday Day because a few years ago there was an incident where a student killed himself. So while I was pulling my hair out over this shit, I noticed something in class. Out of the 20% women in class, nearly all of the white women were able to easily just literally walk up to any guy in the entire class and just start talking about the problem out of the blue and get very positive reciprocation from the guy. And I could literally hear slash see how easy it was to get a group going for them in working on the design problem. Hold on, can we hit two minutes so I don't have to queue another game? I really want to know. 
How can any lefty deny this? How can any lefty deny that this phenomenon just makes some of the most difficult challenges in life easier when you are attractive and a white woman? There was like one black woman in the class and one hijab wearing Muslim girl and maybe like two Indian girls, but I never saw the black woman or the Muslim girl ever talk to anyone. They just stayed in a corner the entire class. How could any lefty possibly deny that in this situation I put forth, regardless of whether you think it's all a lie or not, how could you not deny that, assuming my story isn't a lie, that white girls don't have a significantly easier time going through this than the black girl? Well, to me, it's obvious that any man or woman who reached this point in their career in this godforsaken major is probably highly intelligent, so both things can be true. One, that white women in the class were probably highly intelligent and didn't really do anything morally wrong, in my opinion, but two, yet, they still had an easier time than the black woman who wasn't attractive. Most of them aren't, that's just how society is set up. This experience was what started to change my view on life, where I was suffering so much that I could see how easy it was for attractive people in general. Affirmative action for black women starts to make a lot more sense now, too. If the white women and the one black girl in class both graduate with the same GPA, but that black woman just had to work harder because she got less help, kind of seems like for the same GPA, the black woman is probably just more qualified, so there is an affirmative action hired by a company, so there an affirmative action hired by a company actually starts to make sense. Too bad, in reality, affirmative action didn't help black women much at all. It just ended up helping white women instead, LOL. Even though they already had so much help, LOL, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. Shifting gears to League of Legends, I can talk about even sadder stories. Every now and then I go to a subreddit called r slash league connect, where you can potentially find duo partners. A lot of white women come to this sub to get duos, and sometimes I click on people's Reddit accounts just to see what they are like. You can visit this subreddit right now if you want. You might even see the phenomenon right now where every single thread created by a white woman has like six to eight comp plus comments of people wanting to play, and any thread created by a guy is just dead empty. But the sad story is actually one day I saw a post by a black girl who was probably seemingly on the average, or I'm sorry, who was probably seemingly on the verge of suicide because she talked about how every time she made a post on League Connect, she would get a bunch of guys who wanted to play with her, but in every game, every single time that they found out she was a black girl, they would either delete her or suddenly start not wanting to play as much. Or some guys would be upfront and just say that they aren't into black girls. Apparently, this happened to her so much that she was just fully blackpilled. I don't blame her. Only one in four black women end up getting married. Black women are considered unattractive by nearly every man in society. Retard liberals or lefties will cope and say, oh my god, no way, dudes. I totally think black girls are hot. None of them will ever date one. And the black girl that they do cite as having dated will usually just look indistinguishable from a white girl. Oh shit, there's a personal attack here, but I won't quote that one. <laughs> um, to, not about me, but somebody else. Or they will have to completely renovate their bodies to look as close to a white woman as possible with heavy makeup or skin products to lighten skin color or brutally straighten their hair. Maybe once they reach the color of Rihanna or something, they can have a breakthrough, but anything darker than that, good fucking luck. And the worst part isn't even the conservative, it's that the left act that acts like this problem doesn't exist. Like Hassan's retarded subhuman community that will fakely manufacture soy posts anytime a black woman comes on screen when it's obvious none of them would ever date one, and none of them even acknowledge the problem exists, how can they fix a problem they don't acknowledge exists? This is like a, this is a base schizo email, oh my god. Out, it gets even more base, guys. Hold on, we're not even at some of the most base statements, okay? <laughs> this, also, this guy might be a future school shooter, but... <laughs> okay. Outside of my league anecdote, you can look at actual data on OnlyFans. Black girls are non-existent on OnlyFans or any other social media where you post pictures of yourself. Another story I can share, I don't remember where I read it, but there was an article written by a black OnlyFans girl who gave up on the website. She talked about how she tried everything, lower prices, put out content twice as fast, gave a lot of it for free on her page, tried to look as white, white as possible, turned her hair blonde. She had a whole list of stuff she tried but couldn't retain subs on her page. Looks like OnlyFans is only whites at this point. But don't say that to Hassan. He might link you a one-eighth black woman or a Cardi B or something. Would this level of disproportionate racial bias be accepted in any other facet of society, but I guess OnlyFans has the infamous white woman shield where you, if you critique the website, you're just an auto-sexist. Am I crazy? Why does nobody talk about the fact that all of the OnlyFans is white girls, all of Twitch sexual content is white girls, Asian girls are white girls, anyone who disagrees, cope harder, they both have white skin and look identical outside of eyes, Asian equals white for women, both are considered the pinnacle of attractiveness in Western and Eastern first world societies, there's a reason why even open Nazis are cool with Asian girlfriends. <laughs> Don't get me started with the half Asians either. Literally all of them are white. That's why Japanese anime will have tons of white girls with white names, despite the fact that white people don't exist in Japan, and not a single anime will have a black girl. Or how about this? Is there a single black woman titty streamer on Twitch? A single one. Can you show me a single one who sits on a couch with her thighs up or something? One that actually looks black and not like <laughs> redacted to somebody else. 
I'm not going to read that one. Does nobody ever ask themselves this question? Why is there not a single ultra-sexual black girl streaming on Twitch? Titty streamer Indian girl? Dark-skinned woman? Don't even bother with career choices like this because they know it will be a complete fail. Their life experiences have led them to know it the hard way. And if you bring up something like this in public discourse, I guarantee you black women in your audience or other dark minority women will be quietly nodding along in agreement and relief that someone is finally talking about this, while on the flip side, every white woman on Twitter will rush to point their finger at you, calling you destiny sexist. In fact, this could be me being completely a conspiracy theorist, but I would bet my life that every single woman on that 2X chromosome subreddit and female dating strategy subreddit is white. No way in hell does a black or Muslim or an actual Hispanic or indigenous woman have the privilege nor entitlement to be able to behave like like that and get away with it when they were already when they are already in need for life partners no way in hell could redacted girl that i've dealt with behave like that and get away with it if she was a fucking indian or something um but because she's white she can do whatever she wants because she knows she can probably get a life partner doesn't matter how crazy she is either she's really hot and white so tomorrow she could go get a life partner if she wanted but it's probably more beneficial to dangle a couple guys on strings than to commit to one partner just yet so while a black girl struggles to get even one life partner someone like redacted can dangle like three or four of her mods on strings for as long as she wants and ban them all and get three or four new ones and i, and I understand she has legitimately personal issues can you imagine if a black girl had those personality issues the western world is increasingly being tailor-made for white women whether it's the universal results of affirmative action programs all going to them or whether it's this new era of social media centric lifestyles also it's all going for them as well and again if you point it out the dark-skinned women in your audience will quietly agree and the white women will point their finger destiny sexist so it seems black women are being left behind not only in the real world due to affirmative action primarily benefiting white women but also in the online world where they are treated like worthless trash on an increasingly social media driven world where twitter slash instagram slash only fans slash snapchat slash patreon etc are all favoring white women to a disproportionate degree that is probably unfathomable to consider anywhere else to even the gaming world where nobody wants to play with them or give a fuck about black women because they aren't seen as viable attractive dating partners to men where they all suffer from the all gamer sexism of being a white of being a woman gamer but reap none of the benefits of being a white woman gamer is this all men's fault too Probably, but I think society has got that part covered about telling men to be better and less racist. The part we haven't gotten a single damn inch covered is telling white women to be better and less racist. Ask yourself this. How many of these white OnlyFans girls ever thought about promoting a black woman creator? It's a good question. To answer that, just ask yourself how many lefties cared about Hassan, bullying, about, about Hassan buying a $3 million house. It's extremely frustrating when I see how engineers or even some doctors are starting to get out-steamed, or I'm sorry, out-teamed by white women on Twitch doing absolutely nothing with absolutely no talent, and the main responses are usually, you're sexist or you're jealous. The second one is actually correct. I destroyed my life for six years to get an extremely difficult degree, and now I will be out-earned by melina putting her thighs up on stream while calling everything sexist on twitter and acting like she's oblivious to the fact that the only reason she is where she is because of two variables i mentioned earlier one being at the right time at the right place with the right connections in this case you and two being an attractive white woman doing sexual things that's it but i have to listen infinitely to the cope of how she invented some new angle to put her thighs in that nobody else ever did before a true speckle of engineering there so yes i am jealous why wouldn't i be i wish i was born as a white woman my life would have been happier and easier i know every black woman agrees with me and shares the same idea i know every indian woman has to pursue stuff like a doctor or engineer or lawyer to reach that level of income and they don't have the privilege to just post pictures of themselves online or to write off connections on their list of boyfriends then call everyone sexist on twitter I watched twitch.tv all throughout my university years, but after suffering through this degree, I don't see streamers the same way anymore. I see them all as subhuman trash, highly entitled, low skill, low talent, low intelligence, low mental maturity, extremely high eagle, Hassan Piger, <laughs> only care about themselves, view themselves as gods of success, never had to do anything difficult in their entire lives, would kill themselves in one week if their life depended on getting an engineering degree or a doctorate or medical school and had no backup plan. When they talk about how difficult being having to organize six panel guests on a show, when they think they deserve 750k a year because they organize, or I'm sorry, because... They organize six panel guests while championing socialism and talking about how unfair life is and how they will be the ones to fix it, not even referring to open socialists. Even normies like Ludwig will champion this type of stuff while completely denying that their looks had anything to do with their success when they unintentionally and eventually reveal, reveal how sociopathic some of them are. Casey, Ludwig, Asman, Hassan, list of names is unnecessary, just all of them. How they will betray or throw anyone under the bus for the clout numbers. When I see clips of Yasuo slash Mo telling the delivery guy, I make too much money to be dealing with you right now, or the famous soda pop and nymph lol clip where they were flexing their money on some random normies IRL, or Hassan Piker, who, if he gets his ego hurt too much, will go on huge ego rants about how the guy in chat is a nobody, or Casey Chen will just call some 
will just call some incel in her chat jealous that she makes more money, all while all of these people virtue signal about how Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk doesn't deserve his money or something. Elon Musk has an engineering degree. I automatically respect any person who got an engineering degree 100 times more than the worthless subhuman waste of oxygen that operate on Twitch. When they say Elon should be taxed more because they claim he does nothing and he gets a fuck ton of money for it, how unfathomably ironic. By this logic, every rat that calls Twitch a job should be taxed at 99%. The greed of the Twitch streamer probably far surpasses Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos or anyone else. The Twitch streamer is the true hoarder of endless wealth. What are Hassan, Ludwig, Asman, Asman, Austin, Cutie, and everyone else doing with all that money? Do they have kids or anyone to support? They must have an insane amount of wealth combined together. They all preach so much about improving society, telling others or politicians what they should change to improve society. What have any of them done? To, what have any of these people done to improve society? The best thing one can do for society right now is to email their state reps or senators and get them informed on what twitch.tv is ASAP. It's a young and new industry, but the sooner we get the boomers informed on it, the sooner we can crush this infested rat fuck entitlement nest with taxes. 80% tax rate for every streamer making above 1 million and the money goes directly to the homeless in their area. That way streamers can actually practice what they preach when they wealth transfer millions from their young viewers to themselves. I take that back. 80% tax rate would mean Hassan still makes more than an engineer three or four fold, maybe 95% tax rate. Can't wait for Hassan Piker to find a reason to oppose this policy, though. Whew. Writing schizo email sure is fun. I don't even know what the fuck I was talking about earlier. It's something about white women and sexism, blah, 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 blah. The final point of irony, I will say, is the real white supremacy is honestly OnlyFans and all other social media where white women post pictures of themselves on Twitch too. How ironic that people like Demon Mama and Hassan, who screech about white supremacist power structures, will actually also be the first people to come on and defend the biggest white supremacist power structure of them all by calling everyone else sexist or even pointing out its existence. I can't believe in 2018 I was going around calling Trainwrecks.tv or Trainwrecks TV a sexist. That man is a hero and I owe him an apology from the bottom of my heart. He was spot on with almost everything from an intuitive sense. He just worded it all horrible and didn't isolate the variable of attractive white women and just said shit about all women instead. Right now, you're probably the only person who's able to talk about this shit without being a red pill conservative content creator. Hope you stay strong, King, in the wake of every life day calling you sex on Twitter. <laughs> I didn't realize, you know what, after reading this email, I didn't realize how much I just fucking hated white women. I think this guy is actually true. I think this email is largely true. Thank you for reading part one of 45 L. 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 Hold on. This was a 3,644 word character. 20,112 characters. Or word uh, email, sorry. streamers that has also said like oh yeah but you do like coomer content it's like what do you get that from <laughs> i don't do coomer content on twitch uh oh i do feel bad for mel because technically the she the coomer stuff she does is like beach stuff but compared to the other stuff on twitch it's not even close the asmr section is insane dude holy shit <laughs> 